Hello folks, John Miller here again. I want to talk to you a bit about a certain type of lure called a jerkbait. Yep, that's what we're doing. There we go. If you would like to increase the average size of your speckled trout catches and even have uh, an increase in your chance of catching a trophy trout, then you might want to think about fishing jerk baits. Oh, there's one. Yeah. That's a nice one. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a good 17. He came up for it. I was bringing it up to the surface. He came from way down real quick. Hit that fat boy. In my opinion, a jerk bait is one of the best ways to get a big artificial bait presentation in front of a big speckled trout in a lifelike manner without actually using live bait that you probably have to catch yourself and preserve. I'm using the name jerk bait really as a family name for a bunch of baits that are called twitch baits, jerk baits, rip baits, slash baits, glide baits. There's a lot of different shapes, there's a lot of different manufacturers, and I've fished some of them, certainly not all of them. The baits that I'm talking about typically have a pointy nose with a toe point on the tip of that nose. And the reason that the toe point is there is because when you jerk them, they stay more horizontal in the water, uh, and, and then they can dart around. And I believe that's one of the reasons that they deliver that much more lifelike appearance than a typical crankbait does. But in my mind, the commonality between all of these baits, and there's a bunch of them out there, is that they aren't built to look good if you just do a straight retrieve, even if they have a lip on them. They just don't look that good when you retrieve them in a straight, continuous manner. But they really come to life when you bring, when you retrieve them back in a jerking, pausing type motion. So I fish both jerk baits with lips and jerk baits without lips on them. In my opinion, the jerk baits with the lips can be fished faster. With the lipless jerk baits, I think there the beauty of these lures is that they have a very lifelike motion that's gliding and darting, but if you, you really to capture that, you need to fish them slower. Because to me, it looks like a bait fish that's either in physical distress or it's panicked. Either way, it's a vulnerable target to a speckled trout. It's true that jerk baits are quite effective in clear water, but that doesn't mean that they're only effective in clear water. I have caught a lot of trout in a place like Delacro where uh, you know, water clarity of a foot is pretty good, but there's a lot of times I've fished there with jerk baits when the water clarity was less than 12 inches and been successful. However, in the very clear water of the Mississippi River Gulf Outlet Channel or Mr. Go or Murgo, man, the jerk baits are deadly in that clear water. In fact, we probably could rename the Murgo Channel as Jerk Bait Alley. You can use jerk baits year round. They're not just a seasonal bait. For cold water fishing, like in the low 50s, I like to use a sinking twitch bait, like a Paul Brown Fat Boy, for instance. When I'm fishing a sinking twitch bait in colder water, I'll let it sink all the way down to the bottom, and then I'll twitch it, uh, and then I'll let it sink. And when I let it sink, I typically have a lot of slack line. And I just, I think if you, if you have a little bit of loose line, it's going to fall straight, it's going to fall flat, and it's going to wobble as it falls flat. If you keep tension on the line, it's going to pull it, it's not going to fall flat. There's one. Go. Now you do have to be aware that the bait will often be hit when it's falling. So you've got to watch that slack line to look for movement. And then, obviously, then you set the hook. I like to work a jerk bait with my rod either to the side or angled down. Now, I'm typically fishing from a boat, so I'm standing a bit above the water. So I find that the shorter rods, 6'6", six, six, or even 6-foot rods, are easier to get that 
proper rod angle that I'm looking for. I fish jerk baits with spinning tackle about half the time. I really prefer bait casting for the control and for less line, line uh, snags, but there's a certain technique which of working the jerk bait that the spinning tackle excels at and that's with the when you're that was a little one when you work the bait back into in you can keep it flatter in a more say flatter orientation in the water a more horizontal by keeping the line very low to the water or the rod tip very low and that can be nicely done with a spinning rod because your hand is on top of the rod and so then when you when you flip it when you give it a twitch or jerk it's really easy to do for line I use braided and I'll use something with higher visibility so that I can see it if I'm fishing a lot of slack line technique and I'm usually fishing 20 to 30 pound braid uh, I also always have a leader and it's fluorocarbon typically 17 pound fluorocarbon. I use the fluorocarbon to get the low line visibility at the bait and then the braid for sensitivity. And again, sensitivity is critical if you're fishing with a lot of slack line technique because you can feel a, a bite that you may not be able to see. I also always tie the baits on with a loop knot and that maximizes their freedom of movement on the glide or on the dart. So I'm here with Mark Matthews at Superior Bait and Tackle on Segan Lane in Baton Rouge. And I'm here because this is the place where I bought my first jerk bait that I use for speckled trout fishing here in Louisiana. And I bought it because Mark told me when I was in here one time that, hey, this is a hot bait, you ought to try it. So Mark is gonna show you some common jerk baits that he sells in superior bait and tackle. A lot of these jerk baits, mostly for the saltwater marsh area, is a suspending jerk bait. The more shallow water, we kind of tend to stick to the floating uh, jerk baits here. Suspending is something that we would, you know, get along a rock wall, come back off of it, and we're pulling it over a shelf as it just kind of suspends. Not really on the bottom, not on the top. The jerk bait that I introduced first was the X-Wrap, uh, the SXR8. This is an olive back. It's very, very effective. And what we found out that this looks exactly like a, a bait fish that is in the water. And it's imitating that color, that look. Other lures that are pretty much the same, if you're familiar with the soft dine, the Paul Brown, this is a suspending or slow suspending lure as well. This is not a bad idea either, the unfair lures. Uh, he's got a slow suspend here, and this is real effective as well. Mirror Lure has the 52MR. This came out many, many, many years ago. The number 21 size is probably the most popular. It looks like, uh, you know, a cockahoe minnow more than, you know, anything else, or a small finger mullet. And this is a slow sinking suspending lure as well. Uh, we're all familiar with the Rogue. This is a very popular, you go along a grass line, you would rake this down and as it comes to the surface, often you'll get a strike. Another popular floating more for bass, I mean all this can be used in the marsh for specks, reds and or bass, uh, is a Bagley. It has a little propeller on the back, gives it a little more action very effective as well. Uh, as far as changes in what jerk baits that yeah, we're throwing out there, I just find that they're, they're going much more lifelike, much more detailed. Okay. I think the ability to make a much much more lifelike looking, uh, you know, you got some of the companies out there like Live Target, Azuri, of course these guys here that are making the lure look much more realistic. Much, They're matching the hatch much more so. Which of the jerk baits are the best sellers out of your shop? Long term, you know, the mirror lure, probably the bigger seller. Uh, you can tell when Calcasieu to the west is doing real well because they really love the uh, Paul Brown the items, the soft dines, the mirror dines, uh, the fat boy. Uh, those do real well. Um, my number one seller right now is I keep running out of this because <laughs> I keep talking about it and selling it and I'm using it myself in a 
you know, real excited about it. So I think I do a better job representing this guy. <laughs> just, you know, this is what I'm dealing with. Yeah. You know, this is kind of what I'm into at the moment. Uh, another one that's been real popular that is the Bomber Long A. Uh, they've got a, some folks out there uh, south of Cocodry throwing these, doing real well. They're having a lot of fun. I've caught trout with a lot of different jerk baits, but the Rapala X-Rap M8 I've used the longest and I've caught a lot of big trout on this small profile bait. Oh, look at the size of this fish. Oh my goodness. That thing is gigantic. See that jerk bait in its mouth? One of the reasons I think they're so effective in shore is that they look a lot like the inshore silverside minnow. I haven't been fishing this bait in the coldest water. I think it's an incredible bait to fish when the water's in the 60s or higher. And I can fish it fast and I can cover a lot of rock shoreline if that's the you know what I'm fishing. I can, I can cover it quickly a lot faster than I would be able to with a twitch bait. Rapala also makes a lipless version or a twitch bait version of this X-Wrap body and they call it the twitching minnow. This bait also has excellent action. I really like the darting and gliding action, but I think it's best fish slower than the X-Wrap and I like to give it more glide time and uh, just work it a little bit slower. And it's really an excellent bait in the marsh when you're fishing three foot deep lakes. Nice trout. It's kind of full. Yeah, so corks were doing okay. It went on Cork. quick. Yeah, corks were catching fish. I tried the jerk bait casting downwind on this fast moving drift like we were the cork, but that didn't work well. I wasn't catching anything. The trick was to cast kind of parallel with the waves and let it and work it back toward the boat in a parallel to the waves. And that has worked well. This is the third trout in a row. I fish a lot of Rapala baits like the Shadow Wrap, which is a nice long bait, uh, gives a big bait presentation. I typically fish that one again in a little bit shallower water. It's a shallow diving bait, so I like to fish that along the rocks when the fish are coming up high in the water column to strike baits or in the marsh when they're in shallower water. I also really like the Rapala Subwalk, which is a, a twitch bait, and it really has a nice random darting action, uh, a nice glide. I think it looks very much like a live mullet. Oh, I am not getting stuck on grass. Oh, hey, I love this bait. I'm getting got two or three hits per cast. Nice trout too. Well, I tell you, they are right off the line. The baits I've been using the most this past winter, when the water's been down in the mid to low 50s, is the Paul Brown Fat Boy suspending. It's a fat boy. Hold that up to the camera. And also the Paul Brown Soft Dine. I can let them sink down to the bottom and, and then work them slowly along the bottom. All right. Oh, go. Right, right there at that. That's the same post where I caught that. that oh, last he's one. got some weight. Got some fight to him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, this is a nice one. Want the net? Ooh, that's oh, a good that's two. A nice fish. That's a good two pounder, yeah. Yeah. Whoo! Cool. That's a good twenty. Oh, yeah. That's more Woo. like three. And a half. That's bad. They also have a wobble on the fall, so it gives them some subtle action even when they're falling. The soft dine is an effective little bait, and I've caught a lot of winter trout with it this year. 
Oh yeah, this is the better one. This is the better one. That's like a nice one. Oh yeah. There we go. Yeah. Beautiful. Still getting hits, Sean? There we go. Yeah, I got it. Your, uh, your ratio of hits to mine are it's like about 12 to 1 in quality. A little better. It's time for Mr. Soft Dine. So, yeah, the Soft Dine. Not the XL, just the regular soft dine. I've got the XL. Yeah, I'll probably the XL will work too. It's a really small profile, and I'm just I'm getting a lot of action when the bait is falling. I'll, I'll give it a pull or jerk, a couple little jerks, and then I'll just let it fall, let it fall, and they really hit it. And I give it a, I've been giving it a lot of slack line. There's also a larger XL version, which you can see in this pool footage. And as far as I can tell, it acts a lot like the standard size. Like I said, there are so many jerk baits out there, and there are a lot of good ones. And really, the success of a jerk bait is up to the fisherman. There is a learning curve, but once you get accustomed to jerk baits, you'll find them to be very effective, and especially on larger trout. Based on the social media reports I've been seeing, there's a lot of people fishing jerk baits for speckled trout. Certainly one of my favorite ways to fish them. And there's a lot of freedom in them, uh, in the different ways that you can fish them, the different depths that you can fish them. Now you do probably need a variety, and I would suggest that you get you know, a, a half a dozen of them that cover the range from floating to sinking. So if you'd like to increase the size of the trout you catch on average, give them a try. Good luck out there and watch out for their treble hooks.